Hi guys, Will Terry here, and this video is going to be called How Public School Broke the Artist in Me. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than what I usually do on my channel, but I think it's going to be appropriate because I think it, it's going to relate to a lot of the artists that, uh, that frequent this channel. Um, before I get going, I just want to remind you that I have links below to um, our online school, sbslearn.com, and my website, and social media, and things like that. Okay. So I have wanted to make this video for a long time, um, and I, I didn't do it because I didn't really, I, I knew it was going to take a lot of um, uh, notes and in, in getting my thoughts together. Um, this, I, I don't want to take this into the political realm, but that's actually one of the reasons why I was worried about making this video is because it is highly uh, politicized, and I feel like it's going to probably generate some some discussion. Um, I mean, I hope it does, but I, I hope the message to those who um, are, you know, on the side of really wanting to protect the system that we have right now with public school, I really hope that you'll, before you make leave a comment, that you'll listen to uh, the, the, the video in its entirety. Okay, here goes. So I'm creating this uh, this video for three reasons, basically. Uh, I get contacted as a, as a teacher who teaches at the university, um, as a, um, a teacher who teaches online, um, who does this YouTube channel, um, who, you know, um, is, a, is a children's book illustrator, and I get, I get contacted by a lot of people over the years, uh, parents saying, um, you know, because I've, I've blogged about this issue before, um, and, and I've got friends who have asked me, you know, I've got this creative kid, what do I do with them? Um, and, uh, I, you know, they, they're getting horrible grades. Um, they can't pay attention in school. All they want to do is draw and that they sound a lot like you. What, what should I do with them? And so this, this is, this video hopefully will answer some of those questions. Um, also for, uh, the many people who grew up feeling like I did that 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 they were broken after going through public school um and the third reason is basically to empower artists to help them understand uh where they fit in in society basically um, so here goes um i grew up in the washington dc area my father worked for at&t and at the same time was working on his phd in microbiology um my mom went back to school. Um, she was a school teacher, uh, and ironically, right? And um, she went and got her master's degree. Uh, my older sister got straight A's in public school, uh, and then there was me, and I'm the guy who brought home really, really bad report cards. My sister, my dad was Phi Beta Kappa. My sister later went on to be Phi Beta Kappa. Um, my younger sister is a school teacher right now. I taught high school art, um, so I've, I've been in the public school system a little bit. My wife uh, was a special ed teacher, taught uh, public school for many years. Know a lot about public school. Uh, I've got a lot of it in my family. Um, I was the guy who brought home really bad grades, uh, even though I thrived in music and art. I was uh, first chair cellist in high school and in my county orchestra. Um, and I was always having a great time in art class. I, you know, I was, I was the kid who was actually in art class in public school, who was actually drawing, uh, whereas a lot of the other kids were in there just kind of messing around. Um, one of my big problems was early on was I really had a hard time paying attention. And this was before, um, ADD or ADHD was even invented. Um, I say that because um, and again, this is opinion. I, I know that, uh, medications can work, uh, for people. Um, but I also think that our public school system, I'm going to talk about this a little bit further, um, expects kids to fit in, to all kind of conform to the same method of learning. And if they don't, then, and they, they have a hard time paying attention, then sometimes they're deemed ADD or ADHD. I remember asking myself, what's wrong with me? I mean, my dad was good at math. My, my, um, my sister was good at math. 
my mom was good at math. I mean, everybody was good. They were good at reading. I wasn't good at reading. I couldn't pay attention. Um, I just would, would find myself daydreaming and, and, and thinking about things and, and wanting to make artwork and draw and stuff like that. Um, so my, my parents even had me tested because they were worried. And, and I, I had the best parents in the world, um, have the best parents in the world, um, who were genuinely really caring and, and didn't know what to do either. I didn't know, maybe, well, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe there's something that needs to be done here. Today, I probably would have been medicated back then it showed that I, you know, had a real creative side of my brain going that on the creative creativity side of the test, I scored high. And on some of the other areas of the test, I scored low. Um, what's funny is, uh, with our svslearn.com meetings, I can hardly pay attention in there, but luckily I've got, um, that my two partners are also artists. So <laughs> when we go off on a tangent squirrel, um, it, it, it works out because we kind of all understand each other, I think. Now, keep in mind that a lot of people seem to think that if if you don't do good in school, uh, especially the people that did do good in school, if you're not doing good in school, you're lazy or you're stupid. It's, it's got to be one or the other. You're either lazy or stupid. And those are kind of the labels that are put on on kids. But I knew that I wasn't lazy because I was the kid who was always building something, always doing something, always, always had a project. And in school, um, I was the guy who, whenever there was a, an option to make something, uh, to create a project instead of doing a paper, I would, I was the first guy to raise his hand and say, I'll do it. I made dioramas. Um, I made full scale models. Um, I made a, a model of a, an Indian village one time and um, did all the research and then actually physically built the thing. And my teachers were always amazed at how, how far I would go. And in German class one time, um, in in replacement of doing the, the, the research paper, I did, uh, I made a, a Super 8 film, a movie. So it wasn't that I was lazy. Um but at report card time, I always felt like I wanted to run away from home. Uh, my sister, again, straight A student, was dancing all the way home because she'd get rewarded again. And here I, here I was, you know, trying to hide out in the woods and, and didn't want to come home and didn't want to um, share my, my report card. Well, what it really came down to is I suffered from being an artist. That was my sin, was that I was an artist. Um, and uh, it, it later on in life, it started to really become clear uh, when I ran across uh, Sir Ken Robinson. And I'll, I'll link him below. Uh, a lot of people know who he is. He's lectured all over. In fact, he lectured at UVU where I teach. Um, and, you know, the, the idea of multiple intelligences, the ideas of um, different ways of being uh, intelligent. In other words... Uh, People that, that we, we tend to think that people that read and write and uh, are capable of doing um, computations, uh, scientists and stuff, that those are the smart people and everyone else is kind of not as smart or, or dumb, right? Um, but that doesn't explain why, um, you know, if you put me in the woods, it's funny because I hike all the time and I've, I've brought that in on my channel before. I hike up in the mountains out here in Utah. And there have been times where I haven't had a map, but, and I used to mountain bike. I used to mountain bike with friends all the time. And I, I was the guy who always knew how to get back to the car if we took a different trail and there was a dispute, like we'd come to a crossroads and I'm like, well, don't you remember we, we went past the stump and then we went through the Creek over there and, the, and everyone in the group would be like, I think you're wrong, but you're, you've never been wrong before. And I, I can always get us, I could always get us back to the car. There have been times where I've linked trails where I've, I've thought, you know, I know there's another drainage over here and I can tell that I went this direction that I'm heading north. In, in, in other words, I always know where I am spatially, visually. Um, I, I, I can I, I can remember when we're in a strange place, like, like if, if my wife and I are on vacation, I can get us back to our hotel just by memory, just by looking around and remembering landmarks and things like that. And she she never can. She's like, I have no idea where we are. Yet, she did really well in public school. And we, we've we've often talked, her and I, 
because she was a school teacher, because she went through um, early childhood development. And we've talked about our differences and how she's a reader and she is so good at, at um, which is which is a detriment to me because she remembers every single conversation that we have. Um, and I don't. And she remembers everything that was said. Um, and But she, she can remember things she's read. I can remember things I've seen. I can't remember things I've heard. My auditory skills are, are very low. Her auditory skills are very high. And I think in general, we tend to think we, we've put a value on one set and we put less of a value, <coughs> excuse me, on another set. And I think that's a societal thing. Um, I don't think that that is a, uh, I think that society has, has figured out how to reward one and not the other. And I think that comes from our system of schooling basically is where I'm going with this, right? Um, so, um, and I would, the other thing that I would, I would bring into this is I've, I've always been able to figure out how to solve problems creatively. Like I, I like to brag that I invented the first GoPro camera, even though I'm sure a lot of people did sort of something like that. But because our family used to snowboard all the time together, um, I wanted to take our camera snowboarding and there was no um, cheap little digital waterproof camera. Um, so I took a racquetball. I used to play racquetball a lot and I took my a goggle case that my goggles came in clear plastic molded it shaped it and made a case with velcro to, to strap onto our boards to strap onto our backpacks and we have videos before gopro ever came out so the reason i'm telling you this is because i think there are a lot of artists like me who um, intuitively figure out how to solve things in a creative way because the way our mind works is different from someone who works basically very logically and methodically, and they're both very necessary. Um, now, I got my self-esteem through illustration. Uh, when I came through high school, I was broken. I mean, I really felt like, you know, I felt like, well, the best that I'm going to be able to do in life is, you know, some kind of manual labor job, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but but I thought that there, I was just incapable of doing anything else. I, I just thought that the only thing that I was going to be able to to be good at was taking orders from someone else. I mean, I'm, I I even it's embarrassing, but I even had the idea. Of, well, at least I could drive a trash truck. I remember thinking that. Like I'm, I'm so bad at at um at, at getting grades. Like I just can't pay attention in school. Um, I just really hate everything that I'm having to do in school, and um. I, you know, I'll, I'll probably be able to get a job doing something, but we're never going to, as a family, we're never going to, when I have a family someday, I'll never be able to earn enough money to support them. And it was really sad. I mean, um, and I really feel for people out there who are, who are currently going through, um, what I went through. I mean, I, that's what I felt. I just felt like there was no way that I was ever going to be able to have anything more in life. You know, we went through and did career searches in school. And I remember, thinking, well, I'm not interested in most of the careers that are out there. I, I like making art. I like making, building things with my hands. I'm sorry, I keep touching my nose. I'm, it's uh, allergy season out here. Um, so anyway, um, now, one thing that I want to say to teachers, because teachers often, when I get in these discussions, they often get defensive. And I don't blame them. Um, like I said, I taught high school art, my, my wife taught, um, junior high, my mom taught elementary school. My sister currently teaches elementary school. Um, this is not an attack on teachers. You did not create the system. You work in the system and teachers are going to be needed no matter what the system is. Now, um, I'm also in this video, not going to offer a solution because I don't think that the system is going to change anytime soon. So... Um, while I'm critical of the system, I'm not uh, critical of you as teachers. Teachers, uh, for the most part, for the, the I would say probably 80 or 90 percent of the teachers that I've met are dedicated and hardworking, and care about their students and want to do the best for their students. So um, this is this is not an attack on you at all. This is attack on the system that we that that's antiquated that came. That, that we've outgrown 
but that we don't know how to change. And again, that, that could get very political and I'm not going to go that direction. Um, but my, my message to you is we, we don't need to de defend a system that sifts for certain types of students, right? So, um, you know, what, and, you know, you might talk to teachers sometimes and they might say, well, well, let me back up. Let me, when, when I say sift, I mean, if you're, if you're good in English, math and science, we're looking for you. If you're good in art, music, dance, theater, those are extracurricular, but we're not really looking for you. And the reason why we why we know that we're not looking for you or that you'll know as a student that we're not looking for you is because there's no end of year testing for that. There's no metrics for that. You don't get in trouble if you come home with bad grades in drama. You do get in trouble if you come home with bad grades in math. Um, there's no ACT or SAT for music, art, dance, theater. Um, and so you can say, as a, as a teacher, as a lot of, often teachers will say, well, we know our school has great programs. For... Your students aren't stupid. We, we feel the way we feel and we know the way we feel because they're feelings. You, you, you can't argue with feelings. That's how we feel. So if you don't want us to feel that way, the system would have to change. Now, again, you're not responsible for that. You didn't create the system, but that's how we feel. We feel like everything is geared up towards, hey, when are you going to take that ACT or that SAT? Uh, or there's there's prep for it. There's study for it. There's, um, you know, there's call. There's you got to do good in these subjects, English, math, and science, and history, because college is going to be looking at those at your report card for those grades, and no amount of getting A's in art and band and and uh, theater is going to just get you right into to high school without those other grades so as students we know we get it uh, as creative people we we realize that we are taking a back seat um and as a, i mean think about it from the standpoint of someone who is 16 17 18 years old they start to, they, they don't know how to process. So, you know, you're hearing me right now. If, if, if I had talked to you when I was 16, 17, or 18, number one, I wouldn't have been able to talk like I do now because I was very shy and I was bullied and I I was uh, the kid in the corner in school. Uh, I really came out of my shell from the self-esteem that I got from having over 30 children's books published. And um, I've had over 3,000 uh, assignments from advertising clients, I mean, big Fortune 500 companies um, to, you know, all the major magazines um, back in the day. And um, being able to teach college, I mean, all those things are, are self-esteem builders. But, you know, like, what about the kids who ended up going into manual labor? I mean, I was doing foundations. I was I was roofing after high school. Um, I was I was doing a lot of menial um, labor. I was a carpenter's helper. Um, and I thought that was the best that I was going to do. What about the kids who are kind of stuck in those areas right now, um, who never did anything to really bring their self-esteem back? You know, there's, they still think this is one of the reasons why I want to make this video is they still feel like they're second class. I, I have friends that are in that realm and I've gone to lunch with them and I can see it in their eyes. I can see the exact same look that I had, um, of well i'm not i'm not where you are i'm not i haven't really done anything or made anything baloney uh th that is that is the system that has created that uh, we have not we have not um exploited those people for their creative contributions um so let's see where do i want to go with this now um Oh, so some of you might be asking, well, you know, but Will, you're a successful children's book illustrator, you, you teach at the university, you did all these things, so obviously public school worked. Um, not so fast. Um, the, the, the thing is, I feel like I got lucky. And one of the w ways that I got lucky was um, I had parents who really encouraged me to go to college and really helped me um, understand how to go to college. 
um, and and what classes to take and suggested well why don't you take art classes to kind of pad your grades um, so that you can you don't get kicked out I, I flunked out the first year um, and then they said well you know you get A's in art so take a maybe one or two general ed classes and then take like three art classes to, so that you can kind of bump your way through and that's what I did and that's what got me through um, uh, you know I'm I was at university and I felt like I didn't belong there the whole time uh, but because I could do good in art it it really helped me get through I feel like I was successful or like I've become successful despite our public school system I don't feel like public school helped me um, that much like it like it helped others and, and by the way like my son right now um, I, I'm not a I'm not an all in the tank public school hater in that my youngest son is a math whiz and when he was in high school um, he was uh, one of the kids who and I don't know where he came from but but he um, he was one of the kids that was in the math lab that was um, or the t math tutor that was going around and helping the other kids and so public, you know, I would tell him, I would say, look, public school was the wrong tool for me, but it's the perfect tool for you. And so you have no excuses. You need to exploit this system because you could go into engineering. You could go into um, some sort of, um, you know, computer field. You could be, you know, you know, software developer or something, anything that requires math because you're, you're so good at it. Um, and it's easy for you. And, um, so the, so you know, where, where I say that the system kind of let me down, it's, it's really good for you. I, some people will say, well, you write well, because I used to, you know, I used to write a blog back when blogging was kind of in vogue. Um, I really learned to write after school. My writing was so bad that I, I failed a couple of papers in, in college just because of the grammar. And my teachers were like, yeah, you can't write like this in college. Um, and the only way that I really learned to write were, were two things. One, when I did my BFA, I really cared and was really passionate about the, the subject matter, um, children's books. And I re did all the research and I was so excited to find out all this information that I had the passion to write it well. And I wrote it and my wife looked at it and she's like, okay, we're going to work on this together. And she's really the one that helped me understand how to write. Now I didn't care in school cause I didn't care about what I was writing about. As soon as I found something that I cared about, I was willing to work through it and work over it and work it over and, and polish it and polish it and polish it. And that's what writing is, right? Is rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. Um, and so there was that. And then also um, I used to write on a chat board called The iSpot every day. And my in about two years of writing every day, my writing level, my I'd always have my, my wife would say, before you hit post, let me take a look at it. <coughs> and let me let me edit it a little bit and show you what you've done wrong and then you and then over in like two years I was my writing was so much better and then of course blogging so some people will say well you know you did it so that proves that there's no problem no I got lucky I had I got lucky with my parents I got lucky with my wife I got lucky in a lot of ways um, and there, there are a lot of people who who don't have those didn't have those advantages um, as a side note, I took a, um, a class on Baroque art a couple years ago because it, when I teach, I can take classes for free and just for fun. I wanted to kind of see what it was like to take a class and an art history class, the, the classes that I was flunking out of before. And I think over time, another thing is that I think over time you can really increase your capacity to learn. Um, especially if you have, um, kind of an ADD problem, which I had, I used mechanisms in that class. I could have actually got an A in that class, um, but I got a B because I was working on um, Skeleton for Dinner and the other book, um, There Once Was a Cow Who Swallowed an Ant. And those books were both due um, right after that class in, in the summer, and so I was trying to maintain a schedule. And so I even took a, made a strategy on how to get through that class um, and still get a B. I, I calculated if I didn't study for... Um, so one aspect on the final exam, the teacher gave us, uh, there was going to be four parts and I figured, oh, if I eliminate this one part, uh, and it was a list of slides, 
to memorize with their dates. And it was like, you had to have the dates. And I was like, that's going to take a lot of time. If I eliminate that, but I ace the rest, I can still get a, a B on the test and, and subsequently get a B in the class. And that's what I did. So there's a lot to that you gain in your life over time. And we expect kids, all kids to fit into this one box where at age 17 and 18, they have to perform their best so they can get into the best college. And that works for some kids, but it doesn't work for everybody. You know, I could have gotten an A in this class. Um, if I, if I didn't have the schedule that I was trying to maintain. Um, and that, that's told me that, you know, we all kind of develop at different rates, you know, um, also, I was very interested in, in that subject. I took Baroque art for a reason. Um, I, I just love the shapes, and um, and I, I wanted to learn more about what those uh, what those artists were doing back in the day. Um, so let's see, where am I now? I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. <coughs> um, you might be saying. Yeah, but in order to get a good job, you need to do good in English, math, and science. No, in order to get some jobs, you need to get to have those skills. Um, those skills are really important. But um, one thing that I know realize is that we don't teach creativity um, in school. If you think about it, I mean, there's sure there's creative writing assignments and things like that. But in general, we actually teach the opposite. We ask for an answer, and when uh, we ask for a raise of hands, and if and you don't get any points for trying or for getting for for coming close, or, and, and it's it's interesting because they've done studies to show that um, kids in elementary school, I think prior to between age uh, or grades two and three, if you ask a question, um, hands will shoot up, and uh, when you get to grades four, five, and six, all of a sudden something happens and um, kids really stop raising their hand. They're afraid to be wrong. And that's detrimental because being wrong is the, getting things wrong is actually part of the creative process. And so, and, and again, this is not a, this is not a critique of teachers. It's a critique of our system. Um, they're, they're, what we really need to do is to have at least some time where we are um, teaching kids to experiment and teaching kids to try things and to be wrong and to get rewarded for being wrong and taking a risk um, so that they can fumble their way and find their way to the right answer. And that's, that's what entrepreneurs do. That's, that's what creative problem solvers do. Um, they're not afraid to be wrong. They're not afraid to fail. And um, it's interesting too. This is another kind of side note, but um, if you, if you look up like, if you read about like Harvard Business School or any any good business school, they'll be the first ones to tell you they don't create entrepreneurs. They create managers. Um, those programs teach people how to manage a business once it's become a business. But in order to get an idea and cultivate that idea and in order to uh, take that idea to a marketplace uh, and to, to, to find out whether um, customers uh, or or users are going to appreciate your product. They can't teach that. That's all coming up with an idea. All that is is uh, something that um, they're not in the business of teaching. I don't think anybody is. I don't think anybody's really tried. Um, I, I think that uh, I think that takes a, a different type of learning. And I think it would be really interesting to see what would happen if we did do that. The reason is everything that we want, if you think about it. Everything that you want to have, that you aspire to own or experience, everything has an art component to it. If you think about it, from the food we eat to the clothes we buy, from the cars we drive or the cars we want to drive, to the vacations we take, to the theme parks that we visit, to the cruise ships we go on, they were designed by someone, right? From the movies we watch, the artists, the actors, the comedians, the musicians, the music that we listen to, um, even to the phones and the tablets that we use, the furnishings in our homes, everything that we want, brand new shoes, has an art component to it, everything. And yet we we have this idea that there, that if to be an artist means that you're going to starve, right? Um, 
so that that is an interesting thing that that we have that we we all appreciate art we all aspire to have art i mean you see a really beautiful uh, sports car drive down the road everybody turns their head i mean you know something like a you know ferrari or lamborghini or something um i mean what you're looking at is a piece of art um and and everybody who's and ahs about it so we all appreciate art um the world tells creative people that they are necessary and valuable after they come through the pu public school system that tells them they aren't think about that the public school system tells us that we're not and then we get out and we find out that everything that we want has a creative component to it it makes me wonder how much more we could have as a society if we actually valued artists at a young age in public school um now here's the bad news and here's why it's not going to change anytime soon if you think about it the teachers and the principals and the all the administrators at school did well in public school and they went on to college and then they got hired back by the same system so it's surprising and it's not surprising but when you try to explain this problem to someone who didn't have this problem it's often very hard for them to empathize or to put themselves in your situation because they just flat out don't understand it. And to them, what's wrong? It worked for me. Uh, maybe you just need to work harder. Maybe you just need to try harder. Um, so that's really frustrating um, that especially to, to get criticism from people who who did who, uh, you know, read and write very well, you know, who whose reading comprehension is very high. Um, so yeah this is it's an interesting problem that we have and um i like i said i don't think that it's going to uh get solved anytime soon but i do have some advice for parents um and take it or leave it i mean but um i think that this could help if you yourself is someone who didn't understand or don't understand or don't feel like you understand your children because Maybe you're more left brain and they're more right brained. Um, I, here's one thing that I would do is I would encourage them to give themselves assignments. You know, one thing that I was, I, I don't think my parents encouraged me to do that they could have if they had known. And how could, how could I expect them to know, right? But one thing that I think we could do as parents is um, give, encourage your students, your, your children to give themselves assignments. Um and say you know like hey you know you don't have to do this but if you like doing this you should take it seriously and give yourself assignments to do um and you know i mean obviously we have our our online school and in our in our some of our classes we have assignments that that might be a place to start um you might get an art book and have your kids uh, start drawing from an art book like how to draw art books there's a lot of them out there um you can help them understand that you value their con contributions even if the school doesn't, you know, and say, hey, you know, there are uh, careers in art. There are a lot of uh, things that you can do with this. Uh, become more aware of what there is out there. Um, uh, be Become aware that another thing to become aware of is that your children could become entrepreneurs. I mean, there are a lot of products that are created um, and they they come from somewhere and they come from creative people who have an idea often. Um, so don't, don't limit their thinking like, well, you have to get a job. It has to be that, you know, there's something that they could be working on on their own, uh, that they could take to market. I mean, anybody that's watched shark tank have seen some of the kids that have come on there with really creative ideas. Um, don't something simple is don't make them feel stupid. If they, if they are having a hard time with math, science or reading, let them know that they are smart in other ways or that other things come to them easily, that they still have to pound through it. They still have to work through and try to learn. They're still going to have to try, but that doesn't mean that they aren't uh, intelligent in other ways. Um, let's see what else. Um, you know, another way you can support them is buying them tools or equipment or supplies um, that they can experiment with things that they can do with their hands. Um, it's, it's amazing when I look back on the amount of time that it took for me to get proficient, um, to 
I mean, kind of every every year you kind of feel like as a as a professional illustrator, you feel like, well, now I've I've made it, and then you know another, another couple of years goes by, and you're like, wow, I'm actually better now than I was a couple of years ago. So the progression never really stops, but it is amazing to me how long it takes um, to even get to a college level, and college level students still most of them um, have <laughs> such a long way to go. Um, but I can see the difference um, when I when I get my new crop of students every year. I can see the ones that have drawn a lot through maybe elementary school, junior high, and high school, and the ones who have kind of can't come to it later on. And so all that time really, really helps them um, get further along and 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 helps build their self esteem so that they can really feel like they're they can hit the ground running. Uh, and, and another one is help them understand how to strategize to get through college like like my parents did. I think that's really helpful. I, sometimes I don't think we talk to our kids enough and really help them and, and work through the problem with them. So you're going to have to care. Um, and, for, and for you guys who might, this, this video might relate to, who feel like you were me as an adult, um, you know, just know that it's not you. Um, it was the system that we went through. And, um, you know, I think one of the, one of the uh, signs that it is the system is how many people homeschool um, and have chosen to take their kids out of that system because their kids just don't work in that system. So anyway, that's my message to you guys. And uh, go out there and make great art.